Hello everyone. This video will show how to write an equation of a direct variation given a point. Before we go further, please feel free to check out the description below for the link of the other series of topics related to direct variation. Before we jump into some examples, let's have a review on the definition and real life examples of direct variation. We remember that by definition, Direct variation is a type of proportionality wherein one quantity directly varies with respect to a change in another quantity. To better understand this, let's look at variable A and variable B. For a direct variation, if variable A increases, variable B will also increase. Now please notice the direction of the arrow. Both of them are increasing. On the other hand, if variable A decreases, then variable B would also decrease. Again, please notice the direction of the arrow. Both of them are going down. Again, please notice that for a direct variation, both variables have to increase or both variables have to decrease. So whenever we see this type of relationship where both variables increase or decrease, we can go ahead and say that A varies directly as B, or we can also state this as A varies proportionally as B, or A is directly proportional to B. Now let's take a look at some real life examples of direct variation. Okay, the number of hours you work and the amount on your paycheck are directly proportional to each other, which means that if you work more hours, then it means that you get more money. On the other hand, if you work less hour, then it means that you get less on your paycheck. So again, the number of hours you work is directly proportional to the amount of your paycheck. Now let's take another example. The speed of a car and the distance traveled in a certain amount of time are directly proportional to each other, which means that if a car travels faster, then it can travel more distance. It can cover more distance at a given certain time. On the other hand, if a car travels slower speed, then it can cover less distance. This tells us that the speed of a car is directly proportional to the distance it traveled at a certain amount of time. Okay, going back here, there are two important information that we have to remember in order that we can tell that a graph is an example of a direct variation or not. First, it has to form a straight line. Second, this line should pass through the point of origin or at zero, zero. So these are the two rules that should be met in order that we can say that a given graph is a direct variation or not. On the other hand, we also remember that the general equation for every direct variation is y equals kx, where our k is the proportionality constant or the constant of variation. Now let's go over some examples. Okay, so let's take this first example. Write the equation of the direct variation that includes the point six nine. To make this more visual, I have here this graph. We go ahead and sketch this point six nine. So the x is six and the y is nine. So this point should be part of that graph. And we remember the rules that we've mentioned at the beginning. We remember that zero, zero is one of the points of a direct variation because the line should pass through that point. So these are the two points for this direct variation graph. So that we can go ahead and determine the equation for this. I'm just going to go ahead and put this on the side right here. There are steps that we need to follow. The first step is to determine the value of K. So I'm going to go ahead and label that um, down here so that is S1, we determine the K. Remember that our equation is Y equals KX. We write this because we say that this is a direct variation. Now, our value for X is 6 and our value for Y is 9. And once we have this 6 and 9, we plug this value of X and Y into the 
equation. So that would be um, nine. So this is the second step already. We plug in the value of y, which is nine, and that is equal to k, and our x is six. So we go ahead and solve for k. We can divide both sides by six. So we get k by itself, divide this by six. We cross that out. So we are left with k is equal to 9 sixth, or we can reduce this to lowest term, that's going to be 3 halves. So this is our value for k. Now, what we need to do next for the third step is to plug the value of k into back into the equation, and that would be the equation for the direct variation. So the final equation that we have here would be y equals, again, we get it from here, but this time around we plug in the k, so that is 3 halves x. So this is our equation for this problem that we have up there. Now, please notice that if we go back to the graph that we just did at the beginning, we can say that this is, uh, we say that it's 3 over 2. So from the um, um, point of origin, we go up 3 over 2. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So we go ahead and say that this point 6, 9 is actually part of the um, graph of this equation that we have down here. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. Again, our first step is to write down the equation y equals kx, and we're supposed to determine the k. We can do that by plugging in. This is our x, and this is our y. So I go ahead and write uh, this um, step two. We plug in the values. Our y is negative two equals k, and our x is negative eight. So we go ahead and solve for k. So this would be divided by negative 8. So we can cross the negative 8 out. We do that on the other side of the equation. So then our k then is, that's going to be 1 fourth. Now, why is it that I write a positive k now? Remember, if it's a negative divided by a negative, it's a positive. And I reduce it to lowest term. So 2 eighth is actually 1 fourth. Now, the third step is to plug this k back into the equation and then just the k, and that is the equation for this problem. So that would be y equals k is 1 fourth x. So this is the equation of the direct variation that contains the point negative 8, negative 2. Did you get the same answers as this? Good. Perfect. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. So again, our first step is to solve for k by plugging in the values of x and y. So that's our x, that's our y. So the equation is y equals kx. So step two, we plug it in our y is positive 8 equals k is missing. Our x is negative 6. We wanted to solve for k, so we're dividing both sides by negative 6. Divide this by negative 6. So we are left with k is equal to negative 4 thirds. So what I did here was I um, reduced it to lowest term, so that's going to be 4 thirds. And then the final step is to write down the equation. We're going to use the equation that we got from step 1, but we change the k to the value that we got here. So that is y equals negative 4 thirds x. So this is the equation of the direct variation that contains the point negative 6, 8. Did you get the same answer as this? Good. Perfect. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya!